Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Logan with IGR Rips and Infinite Gaming Respawn. We are today opening Bloomboro. We uh, have our midnight, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, we have our midnight release tonight um, at my store. So I figured what better time to go ahead and open a bundle. So we'll see what we got. Got a little art from the Otter and the Frog. Um, we done pretty decent on our Yu-Gi-Oh! last time. We'll do a little recap real quick. Um, just in the big hits, I think we ended up with like more than the box cost. About, uh, I think it was around $80 or something. Um, so, not bad. Pretty happy with that. And then all the bulk sells really, really well for Yu-Gi-Oh! actually. So, didn't do too bad on Yu-Gi-Oh! We opened a few more boxes after that, and it turns out the one I recorded was the best. So... All right, we, as always, got our little cardboard inserts. Got some pretty cool art. These, personally, some people like keeping them for the little counters. I don't use them. I just... And then we get down to see what, see what else we got in here. Oh, that's a cool little spin down. I actually like that one a lot. That's pretty sick. I like that. All right, and then we got our nine booster packs, and those are our land packs. Let's go ahead and just take a quick little look at these. And we'll get into the boosters. I used to open boxes on pre-release week, like collector boxes and stuff, and it just got to where it didn't make sense. Thunder Trap Trainer, Offspring 4. When this creature enters, look at the top four cards of your library. You move a non-creature, non-land from among them, put it in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random orders. Um, pretty sick full art lands then we got the regular foils but full art lands is what we're looking for out of here personally i don't do anything much with the regular lands i just like the full arts and then you've got the non-foil set of full art lands oh shoot you got several of each in here so the non-foils you got three of each one of each of the different full arts which is pretty sick not bad i like that so yeah that's one of the benefits of getting these bundles is all the full art lands if you're a, someone like me who really enjoys having pretty lands in your deck that just come free as extras in the bundle all right now is the meat and potatoes of the box the booster packs we got nine play boosters I am, a lot of people are very excited for this set because of the cutesy red wall style nature. Um, and the art is cool. Like the squirrel warlock bard. <laughs> the creature type on some of these. I'm interested for how much it's going to change standard, especially with rotation coming out. Um, more than I am just the fact that they're cutesy animals, but that's just me. Ooh, our first rare of the of the bundle is a Gev Scaled Scorch Ward. Pay two life. Other creatures you control enter the, with an additional one counter on them for each opponent who lost life this turn. And whenever you cast a Lizard spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. Hey, we got us another full art land. And our foil is a Temptest Angler. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Temptest Angler. And a Rush Shield Rampager. Not too bad, not too bad. Hey, we got an art card. There's some cool art in this set. Like I said, I know a lot of people are comparing it to Redwall. It's just not something that was nostalgic for me. It wasn't something I read as a kid. So maybe that's why I'm missing out on the nostalgia factor that a lot of people are getting from this set. Rare of this pack is a Sunspine Lynx. Players can't gain life. Damage can't be prevented. When it enters, it deals damage to each player equal to the number of non-basic lands that player controls. And it's a 5-4 four for 4. That seems pretty decent, actually. That's some pretty decent for mono red decks. Because they're all basic. They're all, uh, yeah, basic lands anyways. Another full art land. We got a foil bellowing crier. When it enters, draw a card, then discard a card. Pretty simple. And got a nice little consider effect on a 2 1 body. Or not quite consider, so consider surveil. 
and a bunny art card. But you know what I mean, the draw discard. The effect on a 2-1 body isn't bad. Alright. Oh, I like that art. That looks pretty cool. Bat Cleric. Calamitous Tad. Blacksmith's Talent. Salvation Swan. Flash Flying, 3-3 three, three for 4. Whenever Salvation Swan or another bird you control enters, exile up to one target creature you control without flying. Return to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. Pretty interesting. Get all your stuff flying. And then we got a Foily Full Art Plate. And a Foily Mandrill Assailant. As long as there's seven more cards in your graveyard, Mind Drill Assailant gets plus three, plus O. Oh. And a bushy body card. Haven't seen anything too insane yet. There is definitely some broken cards in this set, but I think we've opened any of them. Sundering Cutthroat, Seed Pod Squire, Spell Guyer, Repel Calamity. Ooh, we got something full art back there, it looks like. Gossip's Talent, Iridescent Vine Slasher, and Wick the World Mind. It's a Rat Warlock. It's a sick art. Look at that. Whenever Wick or another rat you control enters, create a 1 1 black snail creature token. If you don't control a snail, otherwise put a 1 1 counter on a snail you control. Sacrifice a snail for a blue, black, and a red. Wick deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to each opponent, then draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. Seems like a whole lot of words for an effect that's hard to pull off in standard, at least. I mean, you can do it, but that's kind of not a great mana base. Maybe. I don't know. Doesn't really get me excited, personally. It's a cool effect if you get it to go, but... It's going to be a hard build around, I think. Palladium Provisioner, whenever it enters the battle... When it enters, put a 1-1 counter on target creature control without flying. That's our foil. Oh, look at the little raccoon family for a treasure token. All right. I was really, really excited. I liked the art on that showcase, but it was definitely not... The effect of the card was a little bit let down to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that card is going to be the most broken card in the set. But I just seems a little bit too much you got to do to get it to go off. We got a Manifold Mouse. Offspring 2. This is a cool mechanic. You may pay an additional 2 as you cast it. If so, when it enters, create a 1-1 token that's a copy of it. So you, it's the same thing. It's just a 1-1, but it has an effect. Beginning to combat on your turn, target mouse you control gains your choice of double strike or trample until end of turn. So if you got two of those, you could... Theoretically, put double strike on something and then trample on it, also. Pretty cool. Or you could just pick two different things with double strike or whatever. Mountain. We got a foil essence channel. We got a foil rare. We'll take that. As long as you've lost life this turn, it has flying and vigilance. Whenever you gain life, put a 1 1 counter on it. When it dies, put its counters on target creature you control. That seems really good. That actually seems really, really good. Actually, that. Really good effect. Whew, goodness. Right. Yawned right in the middle of it. Oh, look, get like a schematic snake. That's kind of look cool looking. Rotten Mouth Viper. That's a pretty sick art card. I like that a lot. All right. Still feel like we haven't got anything super broken out of our pack. Four Squeak, Dire Side, Three Tree, Root Weaver, Night Coral Hermit, Three Tree Mascot, Pawn Prophet, Wix Patrol. I need the Three Tree, not the Mascot. Peerless Recycling. Balin the Haymaker. Tap two, untap tokens you control, add a mana of any color. Tap three, draw a card. Tap four, put three 1 1 counters on it, and the game's trample. Great Commander card. I'll be surprised if we see that played anywhere other than Commander. An island and a foil starlit suit slayer flying at the beginning of your end step. If you gained your lost life this turn, it's a fail one. Not terrible. And a little arena advertisement. 
Two more packs. Come on, give us something good. Give us something good. Feels like a very lackluster bundle as of yet. Now, I might be surprised. There might be some money in here, but it's not the cards I was really looking for personally. Season of Weaving. That's a, that's a mythic, at least. Sorcery. Six mana sorcery. Choose up to five paws worth of modes. You may choose the same mode more than once. Draw a card. So feasibly, you could choose that five times and draw five cards for six mana. That's pretty good. Choose an artifact or creature you control. Create a token that's a copy of it. Once again, you can choose that. Return each non-land, non-token permanent to its owner's hand. That's not... Okay, that one's pretty good. Six mana, so like, you gotta get up to six, but that feels feels pretty decent. That feels pretty decent. A foil full art swamp. And a Shrike Force. Flying, double strike, vigilance. Hmm. Three mana for a 1 3. Got a lot of stats on it though. Alright, so the Season of Weaving, I'll say we've got one that feels like a pretty good bomb. That card feels really good. Banishing Light, what's that? Image of Battle so, until it leaves. Oh, just a, another Exile until this leaves effect. The new destroy a creature, the sorcery. I'm curious. Let me know in the comments what y'all think of this. I've heard, I've seen a pretty, pretty debated on like how much worse it makes it being a sorcery than go for the throat. But then some people are like, but it gets all creatures. I'm like, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It seems pretty decent to me. But I do get that it being sorcery sucks a little bit. But taking out the conditions is nice. Iridescent vine slasher offspring two. Landfall, when a land you, enter, you control enters, this creature deals one damage to target opponent. That's not bad. That's a pretty good landfall effect, especially if you get two of these for three mana. That every time a land enters, you're dealing two damage. If you're doing any sort of effects where you're getting like multiple land drops a turn, like I could stack quickly. That's, that's not bad. Season of the Bold, a, myth a mythic. We finally got a double hit pack. Two packs from the bottom. Choose up to five worth of modes. Cho create a tapped treasure token. Exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play them. Until the end of your next turn, whenever you cast a spell, Season of the Bold deals two damage to up to one target creature. Hmm. I definitely think the uh, Season of Weaving was a little bit better, but this is still pretty good. Pay five mana. You can either, like, just pay five to store five mana if you want to for another turn. Or you can exile the top two of your library, create some treasure tokens to cast them. You know, definitely, definitely some functionality there. Full Art Swamp. Our foil is a Sky Skipper Duo. Flying, whenever it enters the battlefield, exile up to one other target creature you control. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next step. So it's got a little blink effect on it. Five mana for a 3-3 three, three with a blink definitely sounds a little bit below rate. Probably mainly limited functionality. All right, last pack magic. Let's see if we can get something great in here. Dazzling Denial. Intrepid Rabbit. Treasure and Garden Mouth. Moonrise Cleric. Sinister Monolith. Come on each turn. Each point loses one life. You gain one life. Pay two life. Sacrifice. Draw two cards. Huh. Pretty simple. Plum Creed Mentor. Hey, we got an Alanya Divide, Divergent Storm. Whenever you catch your first spell, if it's a, the first instant spell, the first sorcery spell, or the first daughter spell, other than Alana, you cast this turn. You may have target opponent draw a card. If you do, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So this, this was one of the cards I think has a chance at being good if it's built around right. The only thing that hurts it is it's so expensive. But it's definitely got some neat slots that it could sit in. Because you could end up copying three spells per turn after you cast her. So, I don't know. Definitely, I'm definitely interested to see what people create with that. What is this? Ooh, we got the Rotten Mouth Viper. Now, that's a decent one. Borderless. Sick freaking art. I love that art. As an additional, it's an elemental snake. 
for five and a black, six, six. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of non-land permanents. This spell costs one less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this way. When it enters or attacks, put a blight counter on. Then for each blight counter on, each opponent loses four life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. That is freaking gross. That is freaking gross. That has got to be the best card we've opened today. That's nasty, dude. Just make a whole bunch of tokens or just a bunch of little creatures and then all of a sudden, yeah, sacrifice them all, cast this on turn. Let's say turn one, one mana, turn two, two mana creature, turn three, three mana creature. You could feasibly, like without any ramp out creating anything, you could get this thing out on turn four, no problem, like without even really trying. And then if you're doing the things like they do in uh, Convoke where you play like the little one drop that makes a token, like a novice inspector or something if you're in Orzhov, and you make a clue token, and then you do something on turn two, make another token, you got four tokens out. Then turn three, you drop this freaking thing. And it's like, deal with this now or you are screwed. That's just freaking gross. Just freaking gross. All right, Stocking the Pantry. Whenever you put one or more 1-1 one -one counters on a creature you control, put a supply counter on Stocking the Pantry. Pay two, remove a supply counter from it, draw a card. You're literally Stocking the Pantry. Pretty good for hardened scale style decks. And a bushy, biter, bushy bodyguard. All right, so that, those last couple of hits definitely made this feel a little bit better. The first starting off, this felt pretty gross. But uh, those last hits really helped. And we got us, so we got, this is why I like bundles. And I tell people all the time they should consider getting more bundles. We get our little promo card. We got a, we ended up with a stack, not those. We ended up with a stack of full art lands. Which is great. You go to build decks, you can make it look a little pretty for next to nothing. You got a stack of just bulk from the set so you can sort of play with the, all the new mechanics and whatever all right then plus we got all the foils all the foily stuff that's always great but then you got decent like normally get a decent population of like hits like that right there probably if i would i would be surprised if that doesn't pay for most of the bundle and then the rest of it should easily be made up with the two seasons and stuff i don't really see much of these others being super expensive maybe the gev if there's a Possible possibility of a liver, uh, lizard deck. And then this thing's pretty decent. Anything that stops people from gaining life and they can't prevent damage is pretty good. But the Rotten Mouth Viper is definitely the hit. And we sell bundles for 40 bucks. So, like, it's really not bad. And then you got a nice little box that you can store everything in when you're done. It looks cool. It's got the name of the set on it. I've got stacks of these. These are great for, like, sorting cards, moving cards around. I've got insane amounts of these boxes so they're really really handy um so yeah bundles 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 i open one pretty much every set as long as we've got them um i like opening boxes i just don't do it on release week anymore because i had a couple of weeks i'd open boxes and then we'd run out and i'm like man i wish i hadn't opened those boxes because i had customers wanting some so normally i just open a bundle and uh then once the sort of the hype from the set settles down i'll go to opening booster boxes of it like modern horizons 3 i still had open booster boxes of every time i get some in it's sold out before the next stock comes in so it's uh it's one i haven't even got a chance to open yet until the hype, uh, the hype still hasn't died down but anyways looks like a cool set i'm excited to see what it does to standard uh as always, we are Infinite Game and Respawn. You can find us online at www.infinitegameandrespawn.com. You can find us on whatnot at IGR underscore NC. You can find us on Instagram at Infinite Game and Respawn. And uh, you can also check our TCG player in the show notes. All this stuff will be up for pre-sale before the end of the day. Plan on getting that done before I go up to the shop tonight for the midnight release. So if you're looking for any of this stuff, definitely check that out. Um, We'll update y'all next time about how it looks like we did, but I'm pretty sure we did okay, mainly for that card right there. There is no way that card's under like 25, 30 bucks. If it is, I'll be completely shocked, especially for that art. It's freaking sick. But until next time, have a good day. Bye.